Hi, I'm Pastor Jack Davidson from Redeemer Lutheran Church in Lancaster, Ohio. Pleased that you've decided to join us for this abbreviated worship service for Sunday, March 21st, 2021. We begin in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Our text for today is a verse from Mark chapter 10, a portion of the gospel reading for today, where Jesus asks the question, are you able to drink the cup that I drink or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of Jesus, dear friends, when I played sports in high school, both at Lutheran East and Lutheran West, my coaches tried to drive home the point with me and with my fellow athletes, student athletes, that it wasn't important, it wasn't vital to finish in first place. Instead, what my coaches taught me is that it is important to be in fourth place. Now that comes off as really odd and strange today because a lot of people live their life and compete to win. Anything less than first place is seen as a failure. But my coaches back then were trying to teach us in no uncertain terms that you place God first, you place your family second, others third, and then in fourth place is where you put yourself. That's the way my coaches taught us to compete and live our lives. God first, family second, others third, and ourselves last. I think that's the point that Jesus is trying to drive home to the disciples and to you and me today in our text for today. As he tells us we are to follow him, to be baptized with a baptism that he is baptized in, and to drink the cup of which he drinks. Now what is that baptism and what is that cup? Well, to set the stage, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, two of the apostles, cozy up to Jesus and they ask Jesus for, to answer a certain request. Jesus asks what it was. James and John both reply that they want to sit at Jesus' left hand and right hand when he comes again in his kingdom. They want the power and glory that Jesus has. Now, when the other disciples get wind of this, they were upset, not only because of the power play displayed by these two, but probably they were upset because they didn't think of this scheme themselves. Jesus' response to James and John and the disciples, and this is what he tells you and me today, his response is in the form of a question. He says, are you able to drink the cup that I drink or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am to be baptized? Now, Jesus is not here talking about the sacraments of baptism and Holy Communion. We'll get to those later. What he is talking about, though, is the ability to serve God as sinners. Jesus is asking the sons of Zebedee if they're willing to go through what Jesus is going to go through. If they're going to follow Jesus, or they're willing to follow in his steps? They answered, most certainly, yes. But I don't think they realized the scope of their answer or the ramifications. Because as they believed in Jesus, and as they followed Jesus after he ascended into heaven, they certainly were baptized in the baptism that Jesus was baptized in. They most certainly drank the cup that Jesus drank. You see, they were people who suffered and were persecuted and suffered tribulation for their faith. Jesus said as much. He says, in this world you will have trial and tribulation. James and John and the other apostles, for that matter, had trials and tribulations. James was the first martyr of the faith. John was exiled to the Isle of Patmos because he believed and proclaimed Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. They learned the hard way that following Jesus was not going to be easy. They had to learn to do what Jesus did 
when Jesus instructed them that in order to serve Jesus, you must first deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Jesus. In reality, you and I are a lot like James and John, and we're a lot like the other disciples. We want to follow Jesus, but we want the road to be easy. None of us want to suffer, and it's really hard to deny yourself. We live in a culture that teaches us to think for ourselves, to look out for ourselves. Look out for old number one. The world teaches that if you don't look out for yourself, and you don't take care of yourself, you're not going to get what you need in life. That's why parents strive to teach their children not to be selfish. Because the old sinful nature in each and every one of us is self-centered. We think first of ourselves rather than putting others before our own needs. But not so for Jesus. Jesus' will was to do the will of him who sent him. That's why throughout Jesus' life, he sought to love the Lord as God with all of his heart, soul, mind, and strength. Jesus said himself that the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Apostle Paul explains that Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself to the point of dying on Calvary's cross. So the life of the one who believes and follows Jesus is to be a life of self-sacrifice, it's to be a life of service to others. Jesus calls you to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him. That means following Jesus in all that you do. It may very well mean that you're called to suffer for your faith. Living for Jesus sounds really easy. It's not that simple. In reality, it's really, really difficult. So Jesus comes to you to give you help to follow him. For he's your very present help in times of trouble. How does he do that? Well, he does it in the waters of your baptism, where he gives you a new heart, a new mind, and a spirit, a new spirit, that you're transformed by the renewal of the Holy Spirit in the, in the washing of your baptism. You're given a faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And there in baptism, the Holy Spirit is given to you so that you believe in Jesus, and now that you are empowered and set apart to live for Jesus. So that each and every day you remember that you're baptized, you confess your sins, you ask God for forgiveness for the sake of Christ, and in essence you drown the sinful nature inside of you so that a new person can arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. And so when you come to the Lord's table each and every Sunday, there are Jesus's to give you strength. He says, take, eat, this is my body, take, drink, this is my blood, which is given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. It's in the Lord's Supper that in, with, and under the bread and wine, Jesus comes to you to forgive you your sins, to feed you, to strengthen you so that you can live your life to the glory of God. Here's what living for Jesus looks like. Jesus says, whoever will be great among you must be your servant, and whoever of you will be chief must be a servant of all. To be great in the eyes of Christ means that you deny yourself. You live for Jesus by letting Jesus work in and through you. You live your life not seeking to be served, but to live your life in service, helping others just as Jesus helped others in his life. You do this as a reflection of God's love for you in Jesus Christ. Not to learn, earn, earn anything from God. Uh, your salvation has been given to you as a free gift. But in the power of baptism, Christ now lives in and through you so that you can do the things that Jesus did. And what did Jesus do? Think of all the ways that Jesus helped and ministered to people in his life. He fed the hungry, he helped the poor, to the brokenhearted, he gave hope, to the dying, he gave life. Anyone who came to Jesus was not turned away, he was a friend to all and a savior to all. Just think of the ways that God 
can use you in your life to be of service to others, to minister to others in the name of Jesus. Can you help at the local food pantry to help feed the hungry? Can you serve food in one of the food lines at one of the shelters to help the homeless? Can you help the poor by giving to those organizations such as Lutheran Social Services and other organizations that seek to help the poor and the homeless and those in poverty? Can you lend a listening ear to someone who's going through some trials and tribulations and just needs to talk? Can you pray with someone who's going through a tough time? Can you share your faith with someone who doesn't know Jesus so that they might know that they have a good and a great friend in Jesus, one who will help them in every time of need? How can the Holy Spirit use you to serve others by meeting them in their needs so that they might see Christ in and through you? There's a wonderful story about a house hospital nurse who saw a tired, anxious young man sitting outside the room of an elderly person. She took his arm and ushered him to the bedside of the elderly man, stooped down, whispered in the man's ear, your son is here. She repeated this several times because the elderly man was heavily sedated. She repeated it so he could hear clearly. And in response, he finally opened his eyes. Although heavily sedated, he tried to make out who this person was. He saw the figure of a young man standing by his bedside. So he reached out his hand, and the younger man placed the older man's hand in his hand, and the younger man gently rubbed the elderly man's fingers. Nurse brought a chair in for the younger man to sit by the bedside, and there he stayed all night, holding the older man's hand, offering gentle words of encouragement. Early in the morning, the next day, the elderly man passed away. Young man gently placed the lifeless hand of the elderly person on the bed and went to tell the nurse at the nurse's station. The nurse began to offer words of sympathy to the young man, but he interrupted her by asking, who was this man? Now the nurse was puzzled and said, well, I thought he was your father. The young man replied, no, I never seen him before in my life till yesterday. Well, the nurse was horrified. She asked, then why didn't you say something? And the younger man replied, I sense he needed his son. And his son wasn't there, so I figured that he needed me to be there for him. What a great example of serving others without thinking of yourself. This young man didn't think of himself. He was a servant. May we all seek to deny ourselves and serve our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in a similar way that many more people may come to know the good and gracious God that we have and believe in Jesus Christ, whom he has sent, to the glory of God and in Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep both your hearts and minds through faith in the one Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing of the Lord our God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you now and always. Amen. You've been watching an abbreviated worship service coming to you from Redeemer Lutheran Church for Sunday, March 21st, 2021. If you have no church home, we invite you to join us and make Redeemer Lutheran Church your church home. We'd be honored to have you as a part of our family. 
If you care to support this ministry through your tithes and offerings, you can send your offerings to Redeemer Lutheran Church, 1400 Concordia Drive, Lancaster, Ohio, 43130. We'd like to extend this invitation for you to worship with us during Holy Week. On Monday, Thursday, we worship at 7 p.m. Good Friday, we worship at 7 p.m. And then Easter Sunday morning, we worship at 7.30 and 10.15. Sadly, Due to the pandemic, we will not have our traditional Easter breakfast, but we hope that you join us nevertheless on Easter Sunday morning and for our services during Holy Week as we follow Jesus to the cross and empty tomb. May the Lord bless you and keep you.